Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you a different way to use alcohol inks so that they look opaque. I have added tin foil to a piece of cardstock and embossed it with this beautiful, beautiful detailed embossing folder. The foil actually helps you pick up those little tiny details in embossing folders like this that sometimes can get lost depending on how thick your cardstock is. So it's a way to really enhance the look of detailed embossing folders. And that's why I chose it for this because I felt like the details on these leaves were so beautiful and delicate that the foil would really help them shine through this technique. Now this is a technique that I've done for many, many years, maybe more than a decade. And you can actually do this a couple of different ways. But the object of this today is to show you how you can get an opaque, almost acrylic paint look with your alcohol inks. So just kind of a different way to use your alcohol inks than that beautiful, transparent, kind of billowy look that you can get on non-porous surfaces like Ubo, et cetera, other synthetic papers. So I'm going to add some gesso to this foil. So I'm essentially taking a non-porous surface, tin foil, and I'm prepping it to be a surface that is a little bit more like paper by adding the gesso. This is going to give the alcohol inks a beautiful, beautiful opaque look that you don't normally see with regular alcohol ink techniques. And they're going to behave a little bit differently than the way that we're all used to when we're using them on slick surfaces as a result. However, all of that detail from the tin foil that is on top of the cardstock is going to be retained in the final product, which you will see me highlight as I've done in several of my recent videos. Essentially, this could be a part three of my two-part series <laughs> if I wanted to add this part. Now, this is a pretty even thin layer of gesso. One of the things I like about using gesso in this technique is it also adds a little bit of texture from your paintbrush strokes underneath the alcohol ink effect that you're going to see. You will want to let your gesso completely dry. You can use low heat to help this dry. Look at all those details, it's so pretty. But I prefer to let it air dry because any acrylic medium can bubble with heat. So I don't typically use my heat gun. Now once that's dry and you can see the shiny foil shining through, that's one of the real magical parts of this technique is we're also going to get this luminosity from the foil underneath the gesso with the color on top of it from the alcohol ink, which I am adding now. Now I like to do little blocks of color. So I'm just adding a couple of different inks and letting them run around and trying to preserve a little bit of open space for other colors. So I'll add a yellow. After I added this kind of salmony pink, you can pick whatever colors you want. You can also just do one color. It would be beautiful just in one color. I do try to keep it not too heavy. I don't want some super dark spots, which are kind of inevitable when you're working with multiple colors of embossing ink. It can be a little bit hard to control how they overlap and interact together, and you can get some dark spots. So if you get something that you don't like, you can kind of lift that up a little bit, either with more alcohol ink or just with rubbing alcohol or one of your blending solutions. And then you can sort of start again. I find that it's more organic to just let it happen. You don't get any hard edges and the dark spots just are what they are. So my third color is just a light green. For that reason, I do kind of keep the colors a little bit on the light side, although if you wanted to go full on dark and do some dark rust colors, especially with this leaf embossing folder, I think that would be really pretty. The blue will go on last. This really pops. This is why I like to leave a little bit of open space. 
so that I can just have a few little pops of this blue because it is so bright in comparison with the other colors and it really stands out. So it's sort of going to give me a little sky effect. And right there where it's mixing with the pink, you get a little bit of violet and that's always fun. So fill in the remaining open white spots, let those run together. I just use the tip of the bottle to kind of control where each one of these colors is going and then let that run around a little bit. If the ink adjacent to it is wet, it's going to get pushed away like you see here and that builds some kind of interesting patterns into what you are doing. Now on this right side, I have a lot of color down there already. So when I add the blue, it just creates like a darker green and that's kind of fun. So once you have that all squared away and you get the color the way you like it, I could keep playing with this forever because the way that the leaf detail comes out when the colors get darker and darker is really kind of magical. So we're going to let that completely dry and I want you to see what I mean about not only being able to see the shininess of the foil, underneath there even though this gives it an opaque look but being able to see those teeny tiny little details in this folder is just absolutely amazing so let this dry completely it won't be sticky when you're done it sort of bonds with that gesso and creates this sort of acrylic look it looks like acrylic or oil paint to me when it's all finished at this point, you could just use a sanding block to reveal the foil on the high points of this design. That's a technique that's a lot of fun. That's not new. That's really old. And it's one way to use this technique to really show off the versatility of alcohol inks on various surfaces. But what I did was just highlighted it with gold paint very quickly, and it just becomes this beautiful, colorful textured background with a little bit of luminosity and a lot of detail. Head over to my blog for more information and thanks so much for watching.